Hello everyone, as most of you would know, there have recently been protests in Cuba. President Joe Biden responded to the protests by calling communism a failed system. Communism is a failed system, universally failed system. And uh, I don't see socialism as a very useful substitute, but that's another story. Now, my simple reply to this is, if Cuba is such a failed state and communism such a failed system, then why does that nation have a higher life expectancy than your country? Why does, despite your vile and murderous embargo, does this failed state have a lower infant mortality rate than your nation? What does it say about your country that this little nation, constantly under siege, beat you in such important indicators like this? There's no excuse for the failure of American capitalism in these areas, not one. Now, since the Cuba Revolution, the US has repeatedly tried to remove the socialist government from power. There was the Bay of Pigs invasion, the hundreds of assassination attempts against Castro, and the bombing of sugarcane fields, sugar being Cuba's main export at the time. And of course, there's also the embargo that has had a devastating effect, negatively affecting the health and prosperity of the Cuban people. To quote a 1997 report from the American Association for World Health, a humanitarian catastrophe has been averted only because the Cuban government has maintained a high level of budgetary support for a healthcare system designed to deliver primary and preventative healthcare to all of its citizens. Even so, the US embargo of food and the de facto embargo on medical supplies has wreaked havoc with the island's model primary healthcare system. So, it is only because of Cuba's needs-based socialist health system that there has not been an absolute catastrophe. The same embargo is still in place today. Now, does it sound like the US cares about the well-being and freedom of the Cuban people? No. It is clear that the US wants to make life as miserable as possible for the people of Cuba to get what they want. The overthrow of the socialist government and Cuba submitting to their domination. Now you will hear defenders of the US claim that Cuba can easily trade with other nations. This is clearly a lie, since the US punishes countries that trade with Cuba. For example, see the infamous 180 day rule. Quote, the 180 day rule is a statutory restriction prohibiting any vessel that enters a port or place in Cuba to engage in the trade of goods or the purchase or provision of services there from entering any US port for the purpose of loading or unloading freight for 180 days after leaving Cuba, unless authorized by OFAC. End quote. So if you trade with Cuba, you are in for a devastating financial loss if you also wish to do business with the US, a much bigger market. Now even if you ignore US threats, don't think the cargo is necessarily going to make it to Cuba, see the infamous 1964 British Leyland bus incident, where an East German ship carrying Leyland buses headed for Cuba was mysteriously rammed by a Japanese vessel, making the buses inoperable. In his book, Killing Hope, the late William Blum writes extensively of the vile tactics employed by the US and their protection of anti-Castro Cubans who have carried out numerous terrorist attacks on the great people of Cuba. Now to the current protests. The COVID pandemic combined with the terrible and murderous embargo has devastated Cuba. Last year, the economy, which now relies on tourism, contracted by 11%, which must have caused terrible hardship for the Cuban people. So I understand why some people are angry about their current economic circumstances, even though it seems there is little the government can do. But of course, the suffering of the Cuban people is the US's gain. So they are naturally delighted. Now, as you may have guessed from their embargo and other actions, the US does not give a damn about human rights in Cuba. In fact, the US has a long history of supporting the worst human rights abuses in Latin America. Right-wing anti-communist regimes that killed thousands of people eradicating countless democracies in the process. In fact, according to historian John Coatsworth, between 1960 and 1990, the number of victims of US-backed violence in Latin America vastly exceeded the number of people killed in the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc over the same period of time. So, in Latin America, 
Waving the US flag should not be associated with liberty and prosperity, but support for torture, mass murder, and indeed racism, since US-backed dictators tended to massacre the indigenous people. Ronald Reagan's allies in Guatemala wiping out entire villages. So we can well and truly say that during the Cold War, the US was the true evil empire, not the Soviet Union as often claimed. Due to right-wing terror in Latin America, you could argue that Castro and other Cuban revolutionaries saved their nation from such a fate. Now to me, that is truly heroic. Now I was disgusted to see several leftists side with the protesters carrying American flags and screaming pro-American slogans. Protesters who seem to align themselves with a nation that has been terrorizing their country for more than half a century. A country that threatens their status as an independent nation. No country in the world would tolerate such protests, waving the flag of what is essentially an enemy nation. For example, when Britain was threatened with invasion by the Third Reich in 1940, did they respect the rights of Sir Oswald Mosley and the British Union of Fascists? Were the fascists allowed to march down the streets, scream pro-German slogans, and wave the flag of the Third Reich? Why? Because the British government in a war where the independence of their nation was threatened did not want a fifth column that would undermine the defence of the country in their darkest hour. Now I'm not saying that this is what the Cuban government should do, but I do think the two situations are comparable, since the country has, since the revolution, been under threat of invasion from their superpower neighbour. Yet Cuba continues to stand firm, despite the economic hardship the US has foisted upon it. So it is easy to conclude that these fake leftists who support these protests are dangerously ignorant of history. They are on the same side as the corporate Democrats and Republicans, Trump supporters, Proud Boys and other deranged lowlives that have told lies about Cuba for the last few decades. It is also a known fact that most Cuban exiles tend to, by and large, support the Republicans, being massive supporters of Trump. Indeed, from several statements, it seems they expect the US to fight the Cuban government for them, which is pretty appalling. Now, some of these leftists have even posted idiotic memes, mocking the suggestion that the CIA would be involved in these protests. This is what they do. They mock those concerned about US and CIA intervention until it actually happens. Then they will be appalled, of course, whilst their friends and the Proud Boys and other rightists will be laughing. Thankfully, at the moment, it seems the protests have died down. Indeed, there have been actual massive rallies in support of the government and their system. However, it cannot be denied that this little nation has suffered greatly in order to maintain its independence. Now, I truly believe that Cuba has been a force of good for the world since the revolution, sending doctors to third world countries and maintaining an excellent health and education system in the face of American terror. To quote Nelson Mandela, from its earliest days, the Cuba Revolution has been a source of inspiration to all freedom-loving people. We admire the sacrifices of the Cuban people in maintaining their independence and sovereignty in the face of the vicious, imperialist, orchestrated campaign to destroy the impressive gain made in the Cuban Revolution. Long live the Cuban Revolution. Long live Comrade Fidel Castro. These excellent words were very true. Nelson Mandela, a great man, recognizing another freedom fighter in Fidel Castro, honoring the great Cuban people who were fighting for their freedom and independence. Sadly though, I fear the US will never allow Cuba to be a prosperous nation. Why? Because they fear a good example. Cuba already has a higher life expectancy and lower infant mortality rate than the US. Imagine what they could do if they were not being strangled by this embargo. A terrifying prospect for them. They had the same fear when a Marxist government was elected in Chile. To quote Kissinger, The example of a successful elected Marxist government in Chile would surely have an impact on, and even precedent value for, other parts of the world, especially in Italy. The imitative spread of similar phenomena elsewhere would in turn significantly affect the world balance and our own position in it. This is what they truly fear about socialist governments, that they could provide a good example across the world that would challenge the US capitalist model.
Now, in my opinion, the U.S. will only change its policies towards Cuba if there is a drastic transformation in domestic politics in the U.S. Sadly, there is no such change in sight. Therefore, we should not take their claims about Cuba seriously. For in Latin America, the United States, in its current form, has shown itself to be an enemy of freedom, human rights, and decency. In fact, they showed themselves to be the true evil empire, a nation that was a threat to every left-wing and indigenous movement in that continent, being far more brutal than the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact they were constantly screeching about. Cuba, by contrast, is truly a great nation, which seems to have only tried to help other nations, often against the odds. Therefore, if the current Cuban government collapses, I think it will be a great tragedy. The American leftists who have supported pro-American propaganda on this issue should be ashamed of themselves.